Today on Real Chemistry, we're going to be talking about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is a big word that basically just means thinking about chemical reactions as being recipes. And so we're going to use a lot of analogies in this video about food to get you thinking about chemical reactions as recipes for the products they're producing. So in this first slide, we have a simple recipe. You combine two slices of bread, one slice of cheese, and you get out a cheese sandwich. Straightforward enough, right? And we're going to compare this in the next slide to a chemical reaction. And we're going to use thinking about the ingredients that go into something to calculate how much product could come out. For example, if I put in four slices of bread, how many sandwiches come out? Well, with this recipe, since there's two slices of bread needed for each sandwich, we could make two sandwiches with four slices of bread. What does it look like when you have a chemical equation? Well, here's a chemical reaction that's combining chlorine and titanium to make titanium chloride. And notice that it has the exact same stoichiometry. By that, I mean you put together two chlorines with one titanium, and you get out one titanium chloride. And the same way, if I put together two slices of bread with one slice of cheese, I get out one sandwich. And so we can use these recipes. Stuff goes in, stuff comes out to figure out how much of different types of product we can make, whether it's cheese sandwiches or titanium chloride, just by looking at the recipe and thinking about it. So let's take a look. All right, in the first case, when we're making sandwiches, our question asks, how many sandwiches can you make with 10 slices of bread and excess cheese? That excess cheese part is important. What that means is that when I go into the kitchen, I got plenty of cheese. I don't need to worry about how much cheese I have. All I need to worry about is how much bread I have. And this is the way that stoichiometry problems work at first. We just consider one ingredient. Later on, when they get a little more complicated, we'll consider both ingredients, and then we have to think about which one runs out first. In this case, we know that cheese is not going to run out, and so all we're thinking about is how many sandwiches can I make with a different amount of bread. And here, I'm just going to say, okay, well, if I have 10 slices of bread, and I'll use B to stand for bread, well, then all I need to do is divide that by the number of slices of bread in my recipe. So if I multiply that by one over two, that gives me five sandwiches. So 10 slices of bread can make five sandwiches because it takes two slices of bread in each case. Now, that problem is really easy and everybody looks at that and says, okay, I don't even know why you spent your time telling me that. I could figure that out. But notice that's exactly the same as it is in this chemical equation below. This one says how many moles of titanium chloride can you make with 10 moles of chlorine? And well, if I start out with 10 moles of chlorine, then I'm really going to do the same thing. I look at my recipe and I see, okay, I need two moles of chlorine for every one mole of titanium chloride I get out. So all I have to do is again, divide it by two, because I need to put in two of, those two of those chlorines for every titanium chloride. And I'll see that, oh, hey, I can make five moles of titanium chloride. So these are basically stoichiometry problems. Now there's a lot of variations that we can do here on stoichiometry problems, so there's a fair amount more to learn. But this is the basic idea. You think about how much of something you can make, or how many ingredients you need for a certain quantity of product. So. Let's take a look at a little bit more complicated example. Now let's make brownies, all right? So we put in a brownie mix, and we combine that with two cups of water, and we get out 12 brownies. Why is this more complicated? Well, now we have to take into account that each time we run the recipe, we don't just get one sandwich, we get 12 brownies. And that makes our math a little more complicated. And you'll notice that the chemical reaction below, if we're making ammonia, which is NH3, is the same. We combine one nitrogen in that case with three hydrogens, and we get out two ammonias. And so when we have problems like this, we have to take into account not just the number in front of the ingredient we're looking at, like in this case water, but also the number in front of the product, how many brownies we get out. So if I want to do this problem, I start with four cups of water, so four cups of water, and I want to get to my brownies. So what I need to do then is take into account how many cups of water it takes for each batch, two. So I can make two batches. And the way I can calculate that is, again, just dividing by two. And then for each batch, I get out 12 brownies. So that means I need to multiply by 12. 
So I can run this recipe twice, and each time I run it, I get 12 brownies, and that means I'm going to get out a total, for, a total of 24 brownies. So whenever you look at a chemical reaction, don't look at it as just numbers and symbols on a page. Realize that what a chemical reaction is telling you is a recipe for how to make the product. And if we go down to the example down here, we're making ammonia, and it says if we use three moles of hydrogen and excess nitrogen, again, we don't need to worry about nitrogen, we're just worrying about the hydrogen, how much ammonia can I make? So again, what we need to do is we start out with our hydrogen, three moles hydrogen, and each time we run the recipe, we need three moles of hydrogen. That's what that three is telling us. So this time we're gonna multiply it by one over three. And every single time we run the recipe, we get out two ammonias. So that means I'm gonna multiply by two. So then we basically are gonna be able to run this recipe exactly once, and each time we run the recipe up, we get two ammonias. So this is gonna give us two moles of ammonia. Now, so far we've just been thinking about this in sort of conceptual terms. We haven't really drawn careful conversion factors. But you might be able to see already that we can do these problems with conversion factors and we'll get the right answer every time. And so that's what we're gonna develop on the next slide. We're gonna talk about how you do these exact type of problems if you use conversion factors. So in this case, again, we're gonna be dealing with brownies. And we're gonna write this problem out very explicitly now as a conversion factor. It's good to be able to both think through the problem, like we've been doing in the past few slides, and also to solve it in a sort of systematic mathemat mathematical way, which is what we're about to do. And so if we wanna do these stoichiometry problems with conversion factors, I've broken the process down into three steps. And we just write the starting quantity. And in this case, it says, how many brownies can we make with six, six cups of water? and excess brownie mix. So we got plenty of brownie mix and we're limited only on water. So that means we're only gonna think about water and we write down what we're starting with, which is six cups of H2O. And now I'm gonna write in my second step, the desired quantity that I wanna get out. And I wanna know how many brownies I can make, right? This says how many brownies. And so my desired quantity over here is brownies. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a conversion factor and the numbers in that conversion factor are gonna come from my recipe. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna get rid of water. So I'm gonna write H2O down here. In particular, it's cups of H2O. And I wanna get brownies, so I'm gonna write brownies up here. And now what I do is I go up to my recipe and I see, hey, there's a two next to my water and a 12 next to my brownies. And so if I put a two next to my water down here and a 12 next to my brownies, that's always gonna use my, my recipe up there to convert between cups of water and brownies. And so I have six cups of water, which lets me run that recipe three times. I get 12 brownie outs out three times. So if I just multiply all that through, I'll get out 36 brownies. So this is kind of the conversion factor method of doing stoichiometry problems. And that's how you typically want to approach them. We'll do a problem now with a chemical reaction. In this case, it says, how many moles of ammonia can you make with six moles of hydrogen and excess nitrogen? So now our starting quantity is moles of hydrogen. So we have six moles H2. And we don't need to worry about how much nitrogen we have. And the quantity we want to get to is moles of ammonia. So we want to get to moles of ammonia and we're starting out with moles of water of hydrogen. And so we just write our conversion factor. We want to get rid of that H2, the moles of H2, and we want to get moles of ammonia. And again, I just go up to my chemical recipe and I say, oh, okay, I need to put in three moles of hydrogen. And for every three moles of hydrogen I put in, I'll get out two moles of ammonia. So that two goes next to my ammonia and the three goes next to my hydrogen. And what that means is I'm gonna take six, multiply by two, and divide by three. And that's gonna give me four moles of ammonia. Now, we've been doing relatively straightforward stoichiometry problems, where we've been dealing directly with the units that the recipe gives us. So when we made brownies, we talked about cups of water, because the recipe was in cups of water. And here, our chemical reactions are in moles, and we're talking about moles. One other wrinkle that happens in stoichiometry problems is we're often given not exactly the same units for our quantities of reactant 
that are recipes in terms of. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say now that I have the same brownie problem, but instead of giving me how many cups of water I have, it gives me how many ounces of water I have. So it says, how many brownies can you make with eight ounces of water, an excess brownie mix? Well, now there's one extra step to this problem, right? And I've highlighted that in my steps below where you can see it says, the must, you must use the same unit as the recipe. So I can't just run this problem forward with eight ounces because that's not what my recipe is telling me. It's telling me about cups. So the very first step, if I'm now using uh, slightly different units, is to do a unit conversion. So I write out what I'm starting with once again, which is eight ounces of H2O. And now my first step, instead of using my recipe as a conversion factor, is just to convert from ounces to cups. So you always need to be in the same units that your recipe's in. And in this recipe, we need to be in cups. For our chemical reactions, our recipe is always in moles. So we always have to go to moles. And I've written the conversion factor between cups and ounces here. So eight ounces is one cup. So we're just gonna put eight ounces down below and that gets rid of that. And we're gonna put one cup up top. Okay, now our cups are gonna cancel, or our ounces are gonna cancel rather, and we'll get out cups. So we take eight and we multiply it by one and divide it by eight, and that's gonna give us one cup. And now we do our stoichiometry part of the problem where we use our chemical recipe. So we have cups of water and now we wanna know how many brownies we can make. So we still wanna cancel out water, which I put on the bottom, and we wanna get brownies, which I put up top. So we wanna get brownies, and we'll notice that 12 is in front of my brownies in my recipe, and two is in front of my cups of water. And so now I'm just gonna multiply through. And what this will do is it first takes me from ounces to cups, which is the same terms as my chemical recipe, and then it will take me from cups of water to brownies, and I'll get out six brownies. So that's how many brownies I can get out from this chemical recipe. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a problem that's like this where we're not given the correct units, but for a chemical reaction. So here it says, how many moles of ammonia can we make from 3.5 grams of hydrogen? And notice that since our chemical recipe is always in terms of moles, the very first thing we're gonna to have to do is take those grams of hydrogen to moles. That's the very first thing we're gonna to have to do. And that's very common. We always need to get to moles before we do stoichiometry problems. There's all sorts of variations on stoichiometry problems, and almost always the very first step is get whatever our, our current units are into moles. So we have 3.5 grams of hydrogen, that's what we're starting with. And we need to go to moles. So we go to moles with molar mass. We go from grams to moles with molar mass. And the molar mass of H2, that is molecular hydrogen, is 2.02 grams. So our 2.02 goes on the bottom and our one mole goes up top. So that step there is just to get our units in the same terms as our chemical reaction. Our chemical reaction is dealing with moles, an amount of hydrogen molecules. And so we first take it from a mass of hydrogen molecules to an amount of hydrogen molecules so that we can use our recipe, so that we can do the stoichiometry problem. So that gets, that gets rid of our grams and what we're left with now is moles of hydrogen. And what we wanna figure out is how much ammonia we can make. So the last step here, our last conversion factor we're gonna to have to write, should take us from moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia. So we put H2 down here to cancel that out, and we wanna get out in H3. And again, now we go look at our chemical recipe and we see that there's a two next to our ammonia. So we look at, put a two there, and there's a three next to our hydrogen. So we put a three next to our hydrogen. So we're set we've gotten our amount of hydrogens and amount of our ingredient on the same terms. And now we're just going to multiply it by our conversion factor for our stoichiometry problem. And we'll get out 1.2 moles in H3. All right, so that's a basic introduction to stoichiometry. We've talked about what stoichiometry basically is and we've built up the tools we need to do some basic problems. I suggest you go ahead and watch stoichiometry practice problems so that you can do some more examples of these with more variations on the initial units you're given for and what final number you're actually asked for. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to get updates about new videos or visit my channel to see what other chemistry videos I have.